Howdy partners, I'm Andrew, and like a lot of you, I've been spending my days moseying around the Old West in Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, some cowpokes are having a hard time with the slow pace, clunky controls, and dense systems, but those same qualities that are giving players trouble are what makes some of my favorite Japanese-developed games so special. Red Dead is a Western game made by a Western developer, but today I want to look at some of its quirks to show why Red Dead Redemption 2 is Rockstar's most Japanese game. Let's start with one of the game's biggest criticisms, the pacing. It is very clear that Rockstar wants you to take your time with Red Dead 2. From the super slow looting animations that literally take like 15 seconds and gruesomely drawn out skinning processes, to the barely there fast travel system and Arthur's leisurely movement. Most open world games are built to minimize downtime. They give you superhuman speed and easy icons that tell you where to go, how to get there, and exactly what the hell you'll be doing. But in Red Dead, you're not meant to run from mission to mission. Climbing towers to fill your mini-map with icons to check off a list, instead, its content is spread across the vast plains of the frontier in the form of a mysterious plume of smoke from a distant camp or a desperate stranger you stumble across on the way back from a hunting trip. If you could help me with these shackles, I, I just might have a chance. Oh, oh yes, yes, perfect. Ah, thank you. It's hard to think of a game that did a better job of immersing you in a setting through mechanics alone, at least not one developed in the West. One of the first games that came to mind when I started poking around Valentine was 1999's Shenmue. Yu Suzuki's quirky masterpiece could have just been another bare knuckle brawler, a Streets of Rage for the sixth console generation. But when we popped the disc into our Dreamcasts, yes, our Dreamcasts, players found themselves in a complex simulation of Yokosuka, Japan in 1986. Ryo Hazuki is hell bent on finding his father's killer, but his quest often takes a back burner to playing arcade games and UFO catchers petting cats and driving forklifts as he waits for the townsfolk to complete their scripted routines and schedules. It's weird and wacky and more often than not boring as hell, but it revolutionized how we see video game spaces. Never had there been a video game where there was a living, breathing world in which you could do boring shit like drive a forklift. Plenty of games have convincing worlds, but Shenmue, like its spiritual successor, the Yakuza series, make you feel like you're living in them. Warts and all. You mean that badass dude with a tattoo on his arm? That's him. I've seen him around at night. Really? For details, go ask Toshiki over there. And that's exactly what Red Dead accomplishes with its glacial pace and endless activities. When I first got to the mission where the Reverend was drunk and you have to sub in for him in the poker game, I played the poker game for two hours straight. Fortunate for you both for being gentlemen about this. Same goes for you. It might be frustrating that you can't just sprint through your camp talking to new NPCs and getting new quests, but if you think of it in terms of a slow life game like Animal Crossing or the routine mundanity of maintaining your friendships in Persona, you can see how all those so-called wastes of time help build your relationship with the world and the characters who live there, the West as a character. Japanese games are all about the tiny details, like gorgeously rendered food you'll see for two seconds, or ice cubes melting with the laws of physics. Red Dead takes that level of detail to the extreme, like shrinking horse testicles level of extreme, like somebody coded that. But if you're sprinting through the world on a mad dash to tick off side quests, you just might miss it. It's not as exciting as ripping and tearing through a horde of death metal demons or leading the cops on a hundred mile an hour chase in Grand Theft Auto, but hey, action isn't exactly Red Dead's strong suit, thanks to its clunky movement. Arthur Morgan is kinda hard to deal with. He handles like molasses, has a hard time finding things in closed spaces, and only moves faster than a lazy amble if you smash the sprint button. My hat got knocked off in a bar fight brawl and it fell next to like another, like a horse, like a dead guy or like a knocked out guy or something. And I could not pick up my hat for 15 minutes. Game is too real. The game is too real. 
That's par for the course for Rockstar, who have been using the Euphoria physics engine for animations since Grand Theft Auto 4. And while it does an incredible job of giving weight and authenticity to movement, it's far from the responsive tight controls of pure action games. Look. I understand how aggravating it can be when Arthur's movements aren't a one-to-one -one representation of the button you press. And don't even get me f***ing started on the horses. Oh, shit. But in the context of the larger game, it works. In Red Dead, your inputs are more like instructions for the on-screen character, rather than directly controlling him. Arthur isn't a mute blank slate like so many other video game heroes. He's not Mario, he's not Link, he's not your avatar, and he's not a puppet that obeys your every whim. He's a fleshed out person with hopes, desires, and faults of his own. Then he'll follow your orders when he damn well pleases. The controls remind me of games like Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, and The Last Guardian, which don't have the luxury of dialogue to build their characters. Movement is the only real interaction you have with them. And while they don't control anything like traditional games, their weighty animations give Aiko and Wanda the sense of being living, breathing characters, immersing you in their world without the benefit of a 2,000-page script. Even in lore-heavy Japanese games like the Souls series or survivor horror classics like Capcom's OG Resident Evils, your motions are slow and deliberate. You have to commit to every button press and wait for the animation to play out before you can input your next move. But just like Red Dead, the clunky controls contribute to the atmosphere. The frontier was harsh and unforgiving, and one wrong move could lead you to a painful death. Just get out of here, damn it! All right, easy now. Whether it's at the end of a rope or the jaws of a wolf, Red Dead's movement forces you to think about the consequences of your actions and how they play out across the game's extremely complicated systems. Red Dead is one of the most complex and cumbersome open world games ever made, and behind the curtain there's an intricate array of gameplay systems making the West truly wild. I sunk dozens of hours into it, and I still can't explain to you how the f*** the cores work, why, when I get off my horse, I've got certain weapons equipped, or how I can rob a stagecoach with my face covered and no one around for miles, but still wind up with a fat bounty on Arthur's head. Are the horses in this game snitches? Next to those low-down polecats, the O'Driscolls. I, I googled polecats just to make sure it wasn't racist or anything. It means skunk. Great. Next to those low-down varmints, the O'Driscolls, just in case. Convenience seems to be the biggest enemy in Red Dead 2. You can't just open a menu and go from a bare face to a burly beard. You have to wait for your hair to grow and trim it to what you need. Taking a bath isn't a matter of hitting X and watching a cutscene. You need to manually wash every one of Arthur's limbs. Why? Red Dead doesn't hold your hand, because God knows they would make a big fuss out of it, or overly tutorialize things. It just dumps all these systems on you in a little text box in the corner and expects you to figure them out. In a way, it reminds me of Konami's Monster Hunter, which for decades was considered too dense and obtuse for Western audiences. It made you wade through a million menus just to craft a mega potion, spam monsters with paintballs to track them across zones, and return to base every time you wanted to start a new quest. It's a pain in the ass, but at the same time, the steps required help make every hunt seem like an epic adventure, where you have to study your prey, you have to sharpen your skills and your weapons, and prepare for every possible outcome. Now, Monster Hunter World did a lot to alleviate the tedium, and while it's still not as welcoming as most Western games, it's a world of difference compared to complex RPGs like Dark Souls or Shin Megami Tensei, or Persona for that matter, where you have to figure out how to build your relationships with very little help from the game itself. I mean, the game tells you that you have to hang out with people, but it doesn't tell you the best ways to hang out with people. Sometimes you have to plan dates, you have to make sure you don't say the wrong thing, just like Arthur and his Camp of Merry Misfits. There are games that you can't really just pick up and play, you have to invest in them, leap head first into their dense mechanics, and figure them out on the fly. Just like Red Dead. But once you've cracked the code and mastered the systems, you, the player, feel as skilled and powerful as your representative on screen. Worthy of the ranks of the Fifth Fleet, the Phantom Thieves, or the Vanderlind Gang. Look. Did Rockstar set out to make Red Dead a throwback to the complicated, clunky Japanese games we love? Hell no. Red Dead 2 plays pretty much like a mix of the first game and GTA 5. The same formula they've used for a decade, cause hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
but games have changed a lot in the years since Red Dead 1 was released. And a lot of the complaints stem from years of streamlining that Western audiences now take for granted. But if you take your time, come to grips with the controls, put a cigar in your mouth, get the reins of the horses, and dive headfirst into the systems, Red Dead can be just as rewarding as the Japanese masterpieces that blazed the trail before it. Thanks for watching, partners. Now, I reckon a lot of you varmints have played yourself some Red Dead, and I'm fixing to see what y'all think about it. So let me know in that there comment section. Kindly subscribe to Now This Nerd. And if you got an extra jar of snake oil, why don't you pass that little son of a bitch my way so I can maybe stop talking like this.